Yo, what's up guys, Boss here, and I'm back with another YouTube video, and this time I'm gonna be running a Mega Knight Graveyard deck. I haven't made a video on Graveyard in a pretty long time. I think the last time I did it, it was in a global tournament, and I haven't done a Graveyard deck on Ladder, and I think this is a pretty solid Graveyard deck. I saw it used once in the CRL World Finals, and by the way guys, I just got back from LA a couple of days ago, and it was awesome. I mean, I met so many people there, so many pro players, I met a few YouTubers there and just people I knew online. It was so much fun and it was just an amazing first experience for my first live event that I've been to. And that was crazy. Um, like some of the matches were really close too. I don't know if you guys saw the, the Surge versus Morton match, the one HP one. That was so insane. Like everyone was jumping up and down in the stands and stuff like while we were watching it live. It was so hype. It was so insane. But anyways... Um, this is a 4.3 elixir graveyard deck, so pretty expensive. You're getting majority of your damage in double elixir, unless they like overcommit in single or something like that. It has a lot of really good cards in it in this meta, like for example, the Knight, which is really good right now. Electro Wizard, Snowball, Poison is just used a lot right now in this meta as well. And then also the Goblin Cage, really good on defense, honestly. Baby Dragon's still really solid, and Graveyard just, I feel like, is a really nice win condition to have in this deck. You have a lot of tanks for it, Mega Knight, Baby Dragon. And yeah, it just synergizes pretty well. I saw it used once in CRL. I used it a little bit before that, but then after seeing it in CRL, I was like, hmm, maybe this deck is better than I thought, and I was going to make a video on it. So I'm at 6,000 right now. Not insanely high up, but we'll put, try to push up a little bit before the end of the video. Obviously, maybe try to get 6,100. That would be a good goal. Um, I haven't played a lot of ladder yet this season, to be honest, because yeah, I was, I was at LA part of the time, and also like beginning of the season, I usually play GCs and stuff rather than ladder. Also, guys, there's a global tournament out, so if you want my next video, as in probably Tuesday, or excuse me, today's Tuesday, Thursday uh, is going to be my next video, most likely, and if you guys would like to see a global tournament video, let me know. I can definitely do that. So I'm going to go in with a poison here. I, it should be able to kill the Ewiz, and it's also going to be able to finish off the bandit, so pretty good poison, and unfortunately, this is looking like a P.E.K.K.A. deck, and not going to lie, P.E.K.K.A. is a little difficult to beat with this deck. It might even be... Um, one of the worst matchups for this because they have poison they have um they, they unless he's using the lightning variant because it looks like he does have the ram rider but he's gonna go with a very aggressive pekka right here so i'm gonna go with a mega knight on it um and i don't hit the ram rider which is a little bit unfortunate but i don't really know if it's going to i mean matter too much to be completely honest i guess it's a little unfortunate because i didn't push the Ram Rider back with the Mega Knight jump, and so, like, small mistake, but as I said, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. I'm going to go in with a Baby Dragon here and a Graveyard, just because I feel like um, Zap is one of the best counters for the Graveyard. He doesn't have that in Cycle right now. In his deck, I mean, it's one of the best counters. Zap isn't one of the best counters to Graveyard, but, like, with the current deck he's using, unless he had a Poison, he basically had no answer for that Graveyard. That's really important when you're using Graveyard, is kind of making sure you know your opponent's cycle kind of and also what kind of deck they're running it can really help you out in lots of situations so i'm gonna go in with an electro wizard here and then i'm gonna go in with a uh a goblin cage and it looks like he's just gonna go with a bandit here so he's being really really aggressive right now i think i'm gonna take that damage because he's already dealt so much damage in the other lane and because he was really aggressive there and he just went for a peck in the back honestly this is a pretty good time to just go in for a graveyard i mean i think i should be able to get a lot of damage i don't think it's going to take tower or anything like that especially with the zap but we're going to get so much damage and i think i'm going to poison here too if that night witch ends up connecting we'll get so much damage in fact he was forced to drop a bandit so i don't know if that was really good for him the fact that he had to go for a bandit on top of that let's go for a mega knight here and if he does end up going in for he does go, he does go for a ram rider but it's opposite lane uh we'll still go ahead and get um a goblin cage down here and then i think guys we need to go for a graveyard to be honest and apply it pressure so then that way um he can't defend both the graveyard and take our tower like you saw there he tried taking our tower getting really aggressive and he couldn't defend the graveyard at the same time so we do end up getting the win so good game I mean, Pekka's definitely not an insanely easy matchup, and despite the small mistake we made at the very beginning of the game, 
misclicking the Vega Knight and not pushing the Ram Rider back, we were still able to win. And it's honestly all about card cycle. When we went in for our graveyards, he didn't have the zap in rotation. And then that one time we went in for a second one, he went for a peck in the back, having no elixir to defend the graveyard. And we just took a bunch of his uh, tower there. Um, and yeah, that's we were able to get the win in the end. So that was good. And we moved up a little bit. We're at 2387 right now. We'll probably get top 2,000, even top 1,500, I would say, if we can win our next few games. All right, we found another game here. I'm thinking about what I should do to start the game off. It's best to wait, honestly, with a 4.3 Elixir deck. So I'll just wait for him for a couple of seconds, and then if he doesn't do anything, I'll just Snowball. And then if he still doesn't do anything after that, I mean, I could probably just Goblin Cage. But honestly... I could even wait for him completely after that snowball because my cycle looks really good right now. But because he just went in for a minor, I will just Night Witch on top of it. But if he hadn't played a minor there, I might have just waited, honestly, until... Ooh, so this is a little unfortunate that I don't have um, my graveyard in rotation. If I had a graveyard, what I would have done there is probably go in for a baby dragon graveyard with him not having the poison. But obviously, I didn't in that situation. Um... Honestly, I might just go for a graveyard now. This might be like a little aggressive, but you know, as I said, it's really important to go in with graveyards when their cycle isn't the best for taking care of it. And honestly, I don't think that that was a bad trade at all for me, uh, just because he had to spend barbarians on the graveyard and an inferno drag. Like, honestly, that was a lot of elixir. I am in a snowball here though, because I want my Mega Knight to live. If I hadn't snowballed, it would have probably taken. I would say at least two thirds of the health away from the Mega Knight. It could have even killed it. I'm not really sure. So it was definitely worth it there to snowball. I mean, now that's going to force uh, like a lot of elixir on defense out of him. He just spent a baby dragon and a tombstone, seven elixir. So that snowball definitely got a lot of value for us. And right here, I'll just go for an E Wiz on top of the baby dragon and the skeletons because they would do way too much damage if I just let them alone. Plus, I was almost full in elixir anyways. He's going to decide to go with a lava hound so i'm gonna go for a graveyard and a baby dragon here and i'll kind of see if i can like bait out a poison or what he's gonna do uh like my hope was he would play something there and it looks like he's just gonna zap so he didn't really commit uh the elixir i wanted him to and i'm gonna cage here i don't really want that um the, the baby dragon to splash on my tower so i kind of played it to stall it let's go for a poison there um and that snowball, um, I th think, uh, will defend, but we take so much damage in the process, which sucks. <clears throat> He's gonna tombstone, so that tombstone probably won't do much for him. Let's go for a cage here, and I think I'm gonna drop a graveyard off now that he just used his poison. I feel like it's a good idea. And that's going to force something out of him. And that's going to force his Miner out. So now he's not going to be able to back up this push at all. I am going to snowball those pups just to ensure that he doesn't get any damage on our tower. And it cycles us as well. So definitely not a bad idea. And I think at this point it might be good to go for like a Night Witch at the bridge here. And then just go for a graveyard. He might play Barbarians right now. I feel like he kind of has to. No, he's just going to poison. So... Since he poisoned, now I'll just play another e -Wiz here, and he's not going to have poison or rotation for that. Um, and he just, again, used his minor on defense, so he's not going to have it on offense. Baby Dragon locks on the tower, too. I think I'm going to do something a little aggressive here. I'm going to poison his tower because I'm almost confident I can cycle back to another poison, especially with applying pressure here at the graveyard. He can't really build up a Lava Hound push if he has a graveyard to defend. Skeleton connects, too. If we get one more connection right here... Uh, I'll just end up winning and We don't get one, but we're back to poison So I'll just cycle that going with the poison and that is gonna be a good game. I mean Also, I don't know if you guys noticed or if I already said this my graveyards only level 12 But you can see we're still winning games with it So I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna ask in the comments like can I still use a level 12 graveyard? Yeah, I would say so. I mean you might not be able to, like, finish top 200 with a level 12 graveyard, but, like, if you're top 1,000, 2,000, yeah, sure, it's good enough. Um, and in terms of, like, Night Witch, level 12 Night Witch is okay, but, yeah, Ewiz, you can't really have that underleveled. 
Um, the Ewas has been out for a pretty long time, though. So, uh, Mega Knight, um, that, I would say... That, I mean, it's it would be ideal for it to be level 13. Honestly, I don't really know how you could use a level 12 Mega Knight. I think a lot of interactions would be different, and it would be really tough to beat certain decks. I feel like, like, maybe Giant and Golem decks just different interactions it would be kind of annoying if like uh, say a giant gets a hit or like a golem when it wouldn't if it were level 13 but yeah night witch definitely level 12 is fine graveyard level 12 is fine but the rest of the deck try to i would say try to like max out same with like baby like support cards need to be uh maxed out in my opinion it's pretty important all right so we're one game away from 6100 we're on a nice like little win streak right now and hopefully we can keep it up and get this win here and get 6100 and then after that i'll probably play one more since it's only been 10 minutes so he goes with skeletons to start off i think i'm just gonna goblin cage so skeletons could be a lot of different decks he has an ice golem as well so i mean it could be 2.9 or 2.6 honestly 2.9 isn't the easiest to beat with this just because uh you don't like uh expo actually does decent against graveyard um oh wow but it looks like he decided to expo right there and he, he played it like right into our poison so that's gonna be pretty bad for him i feel like and he's not really gonna be able to support this expo and if we and if he does end up supporting it we'll just apply pressure so he's gonna log and log is the best counter to to a graveyard so i'm tempted right now to go in for a graveyard like a baby dragon and graveyard right now the tower should target it ice golem's too far back he is back to a log though i believe there's his log but we're gonna get a lot of damage before he gets that log off um now that's the one problem with an under leveled graveyard skeletons do end up uh let's get a mega knight off here oh wait a minute when it jumps does the expo still target it Oh, well, thank God. I was a little worried for a second. Ooh, we really had to overspend on this expo, so that sucks for us. Maybe I could have just let it connect and snowballed, but I hope we're all right, guys. We are almost in double, and I also am worried he's going to tornado that to the king. He didn't, so that's good. In fact, he's going to take all of that damage, so I'm a little surprised there that he took all that damage. That was interesting. And he's even going to set up an expo in the lane that, uh, that he... Oh, wow, and he screwed up the tornado. Okay, so a few mistakes on his end, and I was going to say he played an expo in the lane where he had, we have more damage dealt. So that's interesting. Definitely not something you want to do, in my opinion. And we're going to finish off this expo pretty easily. We'll see if he's still going to play the expo in the left lane. If he does, I would be a little surprised. Looks like he's going to defensive expo, so you always want to poison those. I'm even going to snowball on top of it. I know it's not going to kill it, but I need to do that because that's going to cycle me. And I feel like I don't really have another play than that right now. Now I'm just going to go for a goblin cage in the middle. And we'll see kind of like what he wants to do. I think I'm going to Mega Knight in the back, to be honest. As long We have stuff down. We have this tanking. I poison, so I'll just poison his next expo um i'll go with the baby dragon here and i'll poison all that not hitting the tower i'm a little bit more worried about the mega minion in this situation to be honest um and once again we defend the expo pretty easily we could just play this passively now i i don't think we should go in for graveyard just because i feel like he'll probably be able to defend them relatively easy if he plays defense correctly we'll mega knight here and that is gonna jump on the expo no way he's uh gonna be able to like stop that because it was already it already like initiated its jump he's probably gonna switch lanes here go with an expo in the right lane no he's gonna go same lane so i would say that expo is definitely a mistake because now we can just poison it hit the tower and the ice wizard getting really good value off of that poison he should have switched lanes because he needs to go in the lane that uh we have less damage dealt which is the right lane if he wants to have any chance at all but now at this point guys it's triple elixir and we're running an expensive deck so we should be able to um win this here off of getting more damage or just defending either one because we have a such a nice damage lead right now on both towers honestly 
Um, and at the same time, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to break through either. And he continues to play Expos in the left lane. I'm really surprised. I, I feel like he should switch and go into the right lane just because he's getting poisoned out. Now he's realizing that going opposite lane. But at this point, it's already too late for him, unfortunately. I'm just going to poison the Expo, the tower, get a snowball off on everything. I believe that hits the Expo. No, it missed the Expo, but it's going to be all right. So yeah, definitely, uh, I think I feel like he, he played uh, pretty like, I feel like, I don't know. I, I mean, he just kind of played his Expos in the wrong lane, I feel like. That was his main problem. And also, yeah, a couple bad tornadoes, but... I mean, overall, Expo's typically not the easiest, especially 2.9. Maybe Ice Bow isn't as bad just because your poison gets a little bit more value. But you saw there, that's sometimes how you have to play games because it is an expensive deck. Sometimes even with Golem decks too, you got to be really patient and not cycle your Golem. Kind of the same aspect with an expensive deck like this. Just, you have to wait for your opportunity to go in for graveyards. And if they have a lot of graveyard counters, sometimes it's good not to go in for one at all. And if they just have a really fast cycle... Like, for example, Defensive Expo and Log, so good against uh, Graveyards. Alright, so yeah, we're on a good win streak right now. I've actually won my first, or my last, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 games, because I, I didn't rec start recording till just recently, and we're at 6,100 right now. We're almost top 1,500 in the world right now. Um, so I think I'm going to keep playing, honestly, until I get tier 35, and then I could just open both of those chests up on stream, maybe, or uh, in this video. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm a little tired. <laughs> I don't know why I said this stream. I meant this video. So if I actually two crown this guy, I could end up getting the tier 35 now. But with this type of deck, typically it's a one crown deck. I mean, just because Graveyard usually does best when none of the towers are taken. Because obviously, if they have one tower activated, then, they're, then they both target the unit you're blocking the Graveyard with. So he's not doing anything here. And we could just wait. Um, or... I could cycle like an E-Wiz or something, because I have a decent cycle, I mean, I have my Graveyard in rotation, but the only problem is, is let's say he waits and then just drops like a Golem in the back or something, I can't really go with an E-Wiz Graveyard at the bridge, because E-Wiz is not really a good tank for the Graveyard, you have to use either like a Baby Dragon or a Night Witch or a Mega Knight, but honestly, I don't really know if it's a good idea to go with 13 Elixir at the bridge, just because of the Golem in the back, so now it's like two minutes, I think I'm just going to E-Wiz here, um... I don't think it's too risky, and with him waiting, it looks like it's probably going to be a Golem or Lava Hound deck. And we see the Mega Minion, so yeah, Golem or Lava Hound's my best guess. So I'll just cycle a Night Witch's Wall, and I, I'll kind of see what he wants to do here. So he's going to go with his own Baby Dragon, so I'll probably play mine. And I hope that mine wins the interaction because of the Night Witch helping out, and he's going to have a Mini P.E.K.K.A., so... I think a snowball here on that should be good that's going to allow the night witch to get two hits on it and it is going to go down and look at all that oh my gosh if he ignores that that's going to do quite a lot of damage it looks like he doesn't care he's just going to go for a golem had i known he was going to go in there i would have played my graveyard so that's a little unfortunate he's going to be able to probably get a good golem push here and potentially take my tower from unless i'm careful um but yeah this is going to be hard to stop i i think i should have all right, we'll see here, though. I'll poison. Oh, good poison. Never mind. I think we can defend this. That poison's going to really save us. It's it, it was able to hit everything, and also, he didn't have as many P.E.K.K.A. in cycle, and yeah, he just kind of fed us with that poison there. Definitely, uh, like, good defense on our part, and now we can go for the counter push. Oh my god, he just went in for a poison on, uh, on that, so now he's not going to have anything for the graveyard. He's even calling the good game. I think he's right, to be honest. Graveyard's going to chip the tower and end up taking it out. Even if I didn't take it out, he hasn't dealt much damage to our left tower, so we probably could have defended another golem push, wait until the opportunity to send in another graveyard, and we would have won regardless. So I'll just go with a goblin cage here, to be honest, in case he golems. I mean, there's no way, really, he's going to be able to break through. There's just 10 seconds left. We have an e with snowball, everything we need. So that's kind of what you want to do when you're versing uh, golem decks. I mean... You're not really going to be able to, like, if if you're both not playing anything for about a solid 45 seconds or a minute, honestly, I feel like it's a good idea to make the first move, because if you are if you are versing a golem deck, 
it's going to be really difficult to get damage in, especially if it's Golem Poison in double, when they can have a much faster cycle because they're using an expensive deck like you. So, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like Golem Lava Hound, you need, to, you need to be playing stuff in single, but most other decks you want to be waiting because it's more expensive. But yeah, I felt like we played that pretty well, and he just really gave us so much poison value. So we only got one crown there, and I still need another... So I'm going to play one more game. I've only been recording 20 minutes anyway, so I'll just do another. We're at 1,100 right now, and if I win another, we'll probably be top 1,000. We'll just claim this real quick, 5,000 gold, and the next one, 60 gems. That's pretty good. I mean, that's almost a GC. It's like, well, three-fifths of the GC. It could also help buy, like, global tournament rewards and stuff. All right, we found a game here against Philip. So, I'll snowball or just wait. We'll first just wait a little bit, and then if he doesn't do anything, we'll snowball. So, yeah, right here, I'll just snowball the skeletons, and then we have our goblin cage ready when he plays something else. Yeah, we'll go for goblin cage here. And he has an ice wizard and skeletons, so it could be, uh, it could be expo, to be honest, because he has Valk, skeletons, ice wizard. I, yeah, I, I think it's expo. I don't know what else it would be. Ooh, it's quad spell, I think, or expo. It could be either one. So I'm, I gotta go aggressive here because he just used a rocket, and I, I feel like, I, I feel like he doesn't have a lot of elixir after that. Ooh, bad. We won. Ooh, wow. I, yeah, guys. I, I don't really know how to, how to, how to say. Uh, why I won this game or like what I did honestly just took advantage of him rocketing a night witch. I mean honestly I wouldn't recommend playing a rocket on a night witch before you know what the other person's playing because That could happen. I mean a rocket six elixir a night witch is four elixir so I know a lot of you guys, you guys might have heard, you know, if you ever see a four elixir card in the back, you should rocket it. That's usually true, but the thing for Night Witch is it spawns bats when it dies. So you, it's still not really dead after you rocket it. That's why if it's a Night Witch, I usually wait to see what the other person's playing until I drop a rocket on it. And also on top of that, he did screw up the tornado a little bit, which is going to cost him as well. But nonetheless, we won the game pretty easily, and we didn't even have to use our graveyard. I mean, I guess I'll use it right here, but yeah, I mean, this this graveyard deck, I mean, is just really good. And you can also catch some people off guard, too. They might not even know you're using the graveyard, and I guess this guy probably didn't know we were using the Mega Knight. So was this guy using Quad Spell or Expo? He was using Expo. It could have been either one. Uh, so yeah, that's that's another nice win there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're on an eight game win streak right now. 60 gems and we do get the reward. But because that last game was so quick, I wonder if I should play another. I mean, we are on a huge win streak right now. I mean, I I could just play one more because the last game was so quick, but I'll open these, excuse me, I'll open these first. So hopefully I can get, the only legendary I need right now is the girl. There we go. So definitely taking that, skip the strikes, and if I can get it out of this chest, then I'll be more than happy, and then I can just move on. So I have seven opportunities to get it. Magic Archer, already have that max, so I'll go ahead and strike that. E-Wiz, already have that maxed. Inferno Drag, already have that maxed. We're looking for, uh, wait a minute, is my Lava Hound maxed? Yeah, my Lava Hound is maxed. Ooh, I don't think we're gonna get it guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I, yeah, we're not gonna get it But at least we got one but unlucky we didn't get it out of the second chest All right, so we are top one one thousand play one more game just because that last one was real quick And then I'll end after this so we found a game here against raffle uh, And with this starting hand, I'm gonna wait and if he doesn't play anything I might cycle an E-Wiz in the back at like two minutes, just in case reversing a, a Lava Hound or Golem deck. I'm gonna have to wait here to play my E-Wiz. It's fine leaking a couple Elixir. I can't just play it on the Miner because I would have taken way too much damage from the Bats. And he's gonna Goblin Gang as well, so it almost makes me wonder if this is gonna be like a Mortar deck, because he has Bats and he has Goblin Gang Miner, so it could be that or it could be Mega Knight Bait. And it's looking like most likely it's going to be a mortar deck. I feel like that's a good poison. I uh, didn't really know what else to do there. Because I didn't really want to leak elixir. 
All right, I'm going to go for Goblin Cage here to distract this Rascal, and that's also going to distract the Mortar. Now, I don't really want to play anything else. Luckily, that Mortar did end up shooting again on that, so... I think, guys, this is what we want to do right now. We're going to take that damage. He he was down a few Elixir. He just had to spend four Elixir there on that, on that Goblin Cage. You can see here, we're up quite a lot of Elixir. I'm going to ignore that as well. And I'm going to take my chances here and assume he can't defend this. I mean, I, I don't see him defending this after he went in for a Mortar and, uh, and Bats, but he did defend it. You know, I'll actually give him the well play. That, that was really well played. I got it. I got him credit there. That was really solid defense on his part. So... We weren't able to take his right tower. In fact, we ended up getting more damage on his left tower. So I regret doing that. He, he definitely played that defense really solid. I wasn't expecting that. I feel like his Rascals got a lot more value than I thought. Um, but with that being said, I can definitely still come back, especially since, you know, our deck probably better in double anyways. So we'll see if I can get a couple of graveyard pushes in and hopefully get some damage. But he does have log. If he had Bar Barrel, that would be better for our Graveyard. But Log is going to be unfortunate just because he is going to have um, a better way of stopping it. So I'm going to go for my Graveyard here. Uh, let's Poison on top of the Goblin Gang. We're going to have to Snowball those Rascals as well. Just try to get any damage we can. And unfortunately, the King Tower gets activated, but the Baby Dragon is on the tower. Okay, okay. I need to cycle a Night Witch and a Baby Dragon in order to get back to Graveyard. And this is our last chance, guys. If we don't end up taking the tower here, that is going to be a good game. And I think it is going to be over. Uh, I don't know if we can take tower. I guess I'll just poison right here just to try. Yeah, that's going to be a game. I mean, he played really well. Also, I regret being so aggressive and single. I really thought, though, I was going to be able to take his tower. That was pretty impressive defense on his end. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised he ended up defending the Mega Knight, Baby Dragon, and the Night Witch after being down that much Elixir. Uh, definitely, yeah, pretty pretty solid player. At least he played really well that game. But yeah, that is going to end the video. I mean, I ended up winning eight games before I took that loss. So definitely a solid deck. Worked really well for me. So make sure to give it a try. And if you can't use it on ladder, then use it in like a GC or something. Still works really well in GCs. Might be one of the best decks in the whole game right now that doesn't have the Battle Healer in it or like the Elixir Golem for that matter. Um, and yeah, as I said, it was used one time in CRL. So Graveyard is just a really solid archetype right now. And yeah, maybe, I don't know what I'm going to use next video. I haven't used, um, I haven't used Expo on ladder in a really long time. So if you guys want to see like, a 2.9 ladder video i could do that or maybe like um what about even golem because golems made like a kind of a little bit of a comeback like i'm seeing more golem so if you guys would like to see a golem video let me know too i haven't done that probably in like a month or at least a couple of weeks but anyways guys make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're not subscribed already and thank you for 26,000 subscribers i think i hit that last night or something so yeah thank you for the the 26,000, and i'll see you guys next time